who doesn't need much. And uh, she's covered with emla. It's not really necessary, but it's also a little bit of psychology, so she will feel more comfortable. So let's hurry up a little bit. Okay. Okay. Has, has she been disinfected before? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Please disinfect again. So, let's have a look at her face. Can you, can you look to the red light over there? So, when I asked her what she wanted, she said her cheeks and her jawline. That's what she said. This is unique. Have you ever had a patient that comes to you and says, I would like to have a little bit of a cheek lift and a redefinition of the jawline? Almost doesn't occur, but this is what she wants. This is what she said. So we started talking, and she told me that in the past, about a year and a half ago, she's had some hyaluronic acid, thick hyaluronic acid injected into her cheek, and she really liked the result. And she'd also had some radius injected into her mandibular line with, uh, to create a little bit more definition. And when we were talking and when I was feeling, I was actually noticing that she has quite lax skin. So when I asked her how old she was, what did you say? 43, 43. And then I asked her, well, how old do you want to look? And she said, 21. Okay, so this is, this is raising the bar, okay? So if somebody is 43 and wants to look 21, we have to talk about management of expectations. <laughs> so if you want to look 21, then we have to also look at age-related anatomical changes. So if you take a look at her face, which age-related age anatomical changes do you see? What do you see? Can I hear something? Tear drop. Well, she has a little bit of a dark color underneath her eyes. I don't think it's a, it's a big drop. It's not like a huge depression over here, but definitely, if maybe you mean the palpebromalar group. So the palpebromalar group, maybe a little bit of tear drop, but it's more maybe a little bit of pigmentation and skin thinning that allows visibility of the underlying blood vessels and muscle. What else do we see? <laughs> Nothing more? So we only do the palpebromalar groove today. Come on guys, the cheek. Okay, you see a little bit of anterior deflation. You see that there has been mild descent. It's not very severe. Definitely there's laxity of the skin. So what I notice is that she has, maybe we can see it like this better. With this very strong light, it's difficult to really make out the light reflection of her forehead. Can you go up a little bit with the, with the camera so we have, we have a look on her forehead, please? Yeah, so you can see the light reflection. You see that it's broken a little bit, right? So there is concavity right here. There's concavity here. You see, if I start moving her face, you can see that the light reflection is not equal everywhere. From here, it's very easy to see, but because the light is so strong, it's a little bit more difficult for you guys to see on the screen. So I see here concavity in the forehead. Okay, so this for me would be a good area to make her look closer to 21. But of course we have to tell her, this is mission impossible. A 43-year-old woman cannot look like a 21-year-old girl. 
But we can try. I mean, we can we can give it a good try. But we have to manage the number. So if she says 21, then I'll say we have to bargain a little bit. I'll say 42 and a half. So that means only six months off. It's easy. And then what do you say? Okay. <laughs> okay, it's easy. <laughs> Okay, let's, let's take her as close to 21 as possible. All right, so frontal concavity, we're going to start with that. And is there a need for temple filling? Not really. Her temps are quite good, quite full. Is there a need for tweaking the position of the brow? Is there a need? Not really, the brow position is actually very good with her. Of course, all the girls like to have their brows improved. So maybe we're going to improve a little bit of light reflection here at the lower brow. Definitely, we see a starting jowling. You see here, starting jowling. So it's a good indication for lifting of the cheek. If you look from the side, sorry, I don't, I'm not going to break your neck. Don't worry. You see that she has a little bit of a suboptimal Steiner's line. Wait a second, is it gonna, wait, maybe I should go from this side. No, 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 you don't have to go up, just move this way towards me. Yes, that's better. You see here, the Steiner's line is leaving a little room for momentum augmentation. So a little bit anterior projection of the chin that might also help in reducing the jowls. Okay, let's start with the frontal concavity. Just lean back and relax. Actually, if you can go down a little bit further. Okay, so I'm gonna treat the left side of her face today. And I mark the temporal crest over here, and I mark the medial entry point. So I'm gonna start with uh, a little bit of extra disinfection of the entry points and I will give her a little bit of anesthesia as well. So, the entry point for my cannula is going to be just lateral to the temporal crest. One, two, three. So I just go in very superficially with the needle and I inject a little bit of hyaluronic, uh, of uh, lidocaine, a little blend. I'll do the same over here on top. I go in, can you move a little bit this way? Yes, I go in and I give a little blend of lidocaine. Ooh, she's a bit jumpy, huh? Okay, now, I know for sure that she will need a supraorbital nerve block because otherwise it will look sh like she's going to suffer. So I will, I will numb your forehead, okay? Don't worry, you're not gonna experience pain. So I palpate the supraorbital foramen and there's a supraorbital nerve coming. I take a 45 degree angle, I go straight down to the periosteum, I give a few small blabs on the periosteum until I feel that there is some of that lidocaine pressing against my finger over there. And then I know that the lidocaine is going towards the supraorbital foramen. Supratrochlear. Again, straight to the periosteum. One. Small drops that will anesthetize the left forehead. Take a deep breath in, and especially a deep breath out. Never forget to breathe out. Is it necessary then? So, I will use Bellatero Intense for this indication. Can I have a stab needle, please? So, let me see. That will be okay. So I make a very superficial pre-hole with a 23 gauge needle. So I'm not stabbing my patient 
I'm just making a small opening into the dermis. And as you can see, this is a soft fill cannula. It's 23 gauge, 50 millimeters. And okay, before I inject her, she's never been injected like this in the forehead. I'm going to use a cannula. And it's not going to be painful, but you can hear some strange noises. You can hear, <laughs> and you will, you will be thinking, oh my god, somebody is making noise inside my face. This is not normal. Have you had it before? OK, she's had cannulas before. So I go into the skin. And then I want to go below the gallia. So I lift up the muscle. I lift up the muscle and I go through the gallia, one, two, three, click. I felt the resistance and I went through. And I advanced the cannula over the periosteum. You see all the way up to here. Maybe I don't even need the medial entry point. Keep on feeling that scraping over the periosteum. So now I get a little bit of um, resistance, so I don't push it through over here. So this is deep below the muscle. You see it's very thin, but this is below the muscle. And I put a retrograde linear thread there of about 0.05 to 0.1. Again, I lift, I go through the gallia, I go a little bit higher. Multiple retrogrades, small amounts. And then we have to remind our patients that during the treatment, they can keep on breathing, and it's not going to cost them anything extra. Free oxygen for everybody in the clinic. Are you okay? Are you sure? If you're not okay, you can tell me, huh? then we can do something else. You know, I can tell a little story or we can ask another patient. Don't worry. If you don't feel comfortable, just tell me. Okay? We can stop any time. But this is actually the scariest injection because it's in the forehead. And um, actually, let, let's look at the difference. I will wipe off the marking. And you can see already there's a difference in light reflection. Bilateral intense, you always need to give it a little push to get it into the perfect shape. But once you get it into the perfect shape, it will stay in that shape. So let's look at the light reflection on our left side that was treated and compare that to the light reflection on the right side that was treated. You can still see the concavity over here. And you see that only with 0.2 mLs we have reduced the concavity over there. Now, I will, I will leave it at this because I don't want to make <coughs> you suffer more because I see that you're having a little bit of a hard time. So I'm going to go to the brow. All right, let's have a look at her brows. Do you see that her right brow is a little bit higher than her left brow? There's a little asymmetry. Everybody has it, okay? That, that's normal. So what we have to do is raise her left brow to match her right brow. Okay, just lean back, relax. This is not going to be painful. So from the tail of the brow, one, two, three, I give a little bit of anesthesia and then a pre-hole. So what do we want to do? We want to remember that shaping, right? The makeup shaping. We want to increase light reflection just below the brow. So with my cannula, I'll go in and I'll go 
to the subcutaneous tissue, and I'm still with intense. So you see, this is superficial, subcutaneous, and I stop at where the peak of the brow is, the top of the brow, because I just want to enhance the lateral part of the brow, and I inject only 0 0.05. Why do I inject such a little bit? Because I don't want to make the brow heavy. I don't want to add weight so that it will fall down. Actually, I just want to catch a little bit more light just below the brow over here. The real lifting can be done by placing the filler underneath the muscle on the periosteum of the supraorbital rim. So that means I have to go through the muscle so again, you will hear a little click. Can you see this? Maybe you can move a little bit like this. And then my hand won't be blocking the view. See this? It is blocking the view a little bit. OK, I'm, I should do more yoga <laughs> to get into this position. One, two, three, click. Yes. Did you hear that click? I heard it. Did you hear it? Yes. And I advanced the cannula over the supraorbital rim very slowly, and if there's any resistance, I just take it back and I readvance and I kind of rotate. So we know that there's branches of the supraorbital artery running very close there. So I don't want to force my cannula through anything. I just want to slowly advance it. And I want to stop before I reach that supraorbital foramen. All right, so this is as far as I could go safely because after this, I feel some resistance. So I stop and, you know, I just take it safe. And I start to slowly inject about 0 0.05, a little bit more than 0 0.05. Could you hold that syringe, please? I lift up the brow and I press. So in total, I've injected a little bit over 0 0.1 milliliter of Belotero Intense. And I'm molding it now because I don't want to have a very pronounced arcade. I don't want to masculinize her face. I just want to push up that brow. So let's have a look. Do you see that the brow is now higher than the other side? And that's with only 0 0.1. Imagine the strength of this product, Bellator Intense, for brow lifting. All right. Can you raise your brows? Push them up. So you see, here there's a block. There's a lidocaine effect. So even though this might have dropped a bit more because of the lidocaine in the gel, this side is active still. Right? There's no product injected here. Here, the lidocaine in the Bellotero is relaxing the muscle, causing it to droop. But with a little bit of Bellotero here, we are actually able to raise the brow again to a better position than on the other side. All right. For me, this is upper face right now. Let's go to mid face. And I've, I've been talking to her, and she was very honest with me. I asked her, do you want a natural result? And she says, well, when it comes to the cheeks, I don't mind if it's a little bit visible. I love people that are honest. I'm not going to show you artificial results. Okay? I'm, I told her, listen, tonight I'm, I, I'm not maybe going to give you exactly what you want. Maybe later over drinks. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm going to show them uh, how to give you a natural rejuvenation. So I take a line between the lateral canthus and the mandibular angle. There's a line between the helix and the aorta. Can I have one of those radius uh, papers that's in the radius box? There's a little paper. This, this, this small one, yeah. All right. So there's a little paper I use for this purpose, you know. Go from here over the cheek to the ala, and then you find 
the ideal point of the apex of the cheek. So here's where I'm going to give her a little bit extra projection. But around it, of course, I will also give her some teardrop nasodugal groove. All right. So the way that I do it, and you know, it doesn't really matter, you know, how you do it. This is just the way that I do it, and you know, I do it always the same. So it's very easy. I don't have to think. I start at the mandibular, uh, the zygomatic arch. I draw my vector line to the oral commissure, and I find my first and my second entry point. With these two entry points, I can give very good cheek augmentation in the depth, <coughs> but also superficial. Above the alar tragal line, I inject deep on the periosteum. Below this alar tragal line, I just focus on skin rejuvenation because of the laxity of the skin, so I'm going to use diluted radius for you here, the lower, lower cheek. Did you change the needle? Yes. Okay. I don't mind using a lot of disinfection, you know, it's cheap. You could be very generous with it. One, two, three. A little bit of anesthesia. Anesthesia burns, so it's not very comfortable. One, two, three. Okay. She doesn't like the anesthesia, does she? So that's, that's something I noticed. Israeli girls are very sensitive, aren't they? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> That's why I give her anesthesia. <laughs> I need a pre-hole, please. Pre-hole. And I need... Um, okay, let's talk about product choice. Which product should we use here? Which product should we use? The lateral volume. Why? I agree, I agree. We should, we should inject the lateral volume. But why? Because there's already hyaluronic acid in that area. So that is the most certain way that we can avoid uh, complications. <laughs> even though she would be also a very good candidate for Radius Plus. And actually, I would also feel very comfortable injecting Radius Plus here in the deep part, because that HA was injected more than a year ago. So actually, it should be safe to, to inject uh, Radius Plus. But I want to give you a very good example and um, show you bilateral volume for cheek augmentation. Maybe it would be easy for me, either if the camera would be standing a little bit more here, or because can you see enough like this? Is it okay? Yes. It's okay. 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 All right. So I enter with the cannula, and again the same one. I like these ones; they're nice and rigid. And I go to that apex point, right? So I told you above this line, I want to be deep. So I lift up the soft tissue. I go down and I feel the resistance of the SMAS. So I pull and I push and I feel the resistance. So I rotate, I make a weak spot in the SMAS and I click through, click, click. So now I feel the typical scraping sensation over the periosteum. Yes, I am there. Use my non-dominant index finger to check the tip location. I put my finger on one place and I move the cannula, and then I feel over there as the tip location. So I give a little bit of product over here, like 0.05. I take it back, and now I'm exactly at that apex point. So I give a bigger bolus of about 0.1. Behind that, another small bolus, and another small bolus. So even though I'm using a cannula, it doesn't mean I always have to use a retrograde injection technique. 
again, bolus here, bolus here. And you know, the nice thing about bolus technique, the bolus have such a nice lifting capacity. So this is using the real quality of bilateral volume is lifting, you know, it's like pushing the tissue for you forward, it's projection. As you can see, there's a little bit necessary here on the upper part of the zygoma towards the lateral canthus. Can you see it? One, two, three, click. Yes, I'm through. Bevel is down, check the tip location again and inject small amounts and reduce that step off of our cheek. <coughs> All right, so have I've injected half a syringe right now. Yes, it's at 0.5, so it's half a syringe. So still not a lot, I'm not using a lot. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at what we've done. Let's have a look at the light reflection again. You see now, let's see, straight. You see now that on this side of our face, the light reflection is about here. On this side of our face, we are raising the light reflection. It's becoming more lateral. Do you see that? So we are lifting the cheeks. One thing that we sometimes see when we do the lateral cheek even though the cheek might look very nice, we see that the, there is a, a depression over here that is actually more severe than before the lateral cheek augmentation. This is the palpogromular groove, and this is evidence of bone resorption. But we'll get to that after the medial cheek. So the medial cheek is going from this entry point and my cannula is going to go this way. Now, I have to be careful where I place the product because there is the infraorbital foramen over here. And that foramen, we should avoid. There is a ligament insertion, the zygomatic cutaneous ligament, and there is the orbicular cutaneous ligament. So from here, I will be going first in between the two ligaments, and that might improve the tear trough. But then I will also be going below this ligament, and I will lift it up and push up that retaining ligament in order to get that lift of the medial cheek. So I will take my bilateral volume again and go in. Did I make a pre-hole here? I think I did, huh? No, I'm, I'm in. Okay. All right. So, so, again, I lift the tissue, go through the smas, and advance the cannula over the periosteum. So it's now above the infraorbital foramen, but there's a sensitive area over here because it's so close to the nerve. So I start to inject a small amount, and I'm not in the tear trough. I'm lateral to the tear trough. So I'm good. I lift <coughs> the retaining ligament, and now I feel click. I went through the retaining ligament, and now I'm injecting a bolus of about 0.1, just below that retaining ligament. And again, also here, because the, the origin of that retaining ligament is, is on the bone, of course. And even though we can see the skin insertion going like this, the bone position is very close to the skin over here, but then on the bone it goes horizontally. So the ligament inserts much lower than it originates. Okay, how are you feeling? You okay? You don't want to go home yet? No. Okay. So you're starting to enjoy it? Yeah. Okay. Well, sometimes during the treatment, you know, I'm getting, getting these angry looks from these patients because I hurt them, you know. It's sometimes it's like there's all these little pains and the longer the treatment lasts, the more irritating the little pains become. 
but I'm always confident that even though the love might fade for a little while, it will come back later. Because when she will look in the mirror, she will be very happy. Okay. So it, it is a very great transition to radius. So I will show you now how we can improve skin laxity with hyper-diluted radius. So here, for the face, I use for skin like this, I use 50-50 dilution. So as you can see, this is classic radius, but if I press the 3 ml syringe, there's a stop on the radius syringe. So I cannot press any further. That's good because otherwise I would press out the plunger and I would lose all my radius, right? So on the radius plus syringe, they remove the stop. So if you want to mix saline or lidocaine through radius plus, remember there is no stop. So if you mix, you might lose your product. It happened to me, so I, I want you to, <laughs> to prevent you from having, having, uh, to getting that problem. Okay, um, this is 50-50 dilution. Again, I take that 2350 cannula. Sorry, I just want to have a wet swab. I know that you disinfected the hair, I just want to do it again. All right, so superficial injection. I stretch the skin and I just go at the dermal subdermal junction over here. You see, just very superficial. And I inject small retrogrades, about 0.05 to 0.1. And I am doing fanning technique. And you see that she has a little bit of discomfort, even though it's, maybe you can give me a 25 gauge cannula, maybe this is more. Relax, sweetheart, relax your shoulders. Okay, you'll be okay. There's a big difference between different cultures, you know? When I go to Russia, the Russian women, they don't feel pain. It's unbelievable. <laughs> they just sit there with a big smile on their face. They're getting all these needles in their face and they don't care. <laughs> what is that? I can't say anything because, if, of course, I am also full of this, uh, of this stuff. I'm a baby. When I'm in this chair, I'm really a baby. I'm almost crying with every injection. <laughs> so I cannot, <laughs> I cannot have an opinion. Is this better? Is this better? Yeah? Okay, so she prefers the 25 gauge cannulas. So size does matter. All right, so medial cheek from here, I go horizontally towards the ala. I don't inject into the nasolabial fat compartment, but, and as you can see, when I advance my cannula, I press down the syringe in order for the tip of the cannula to glide over the lower part of the dermis. And this will make her happy. So now she's suffering maybe a little bit, but this will give her a very nice skin rejuvenation. All right. Now, let's have a look at what we did. So normally, you don't see a lot of effect of radius diluted, but as you can see, definitely, you see an improvement. You see how this is lifting? You see how the light reflection is improving? There's light, nice and even. And here you can see, well, you know, there's light here, a bit of shadow here, you know, so it's improving the light reflection. So we are doing what Kim Kardashian does, facial shaping. You talking about this? Okay. She also has a little bit of pigmentation, so that makes it a little bit more difficult to assess light reflection. Could I have that um, bilateral intense on the cannula back? All right, 
Palpebro malar groove. Before we go to the lower face, all right, we've created a nice lateral cheek, but we have created a problem also because there's a little depression that is now worse than it was. Is that what you mean? Yes. Okay, I will give you a little bit of anesthesia again. So with my index finger, I'm on the infraorbital rim, and I'm targeting a foramen here, the zygomatical facial foramen. So I'm anesthetizing that area right now. And also, it is also a little bit of hydrodissection of this area. Okay, palpebromalar group. Okay, maybe I should give you also a little bit of anesthesia over here. Okay. Could you change the needle again, please? So there's different ways to treat the palpebromalar groove, but the safest way is to avoid the direction of the cannula to go into the direction of the eye, all right? So avoid that direction. Just go in a way that you can never enter into the globus with your cannula. This is the safest way. So start from here. In this direction, Lift the tissue, go through the smas, and then go along the infraorbital rim. And you have to guide the cannula a little bit with your finger. It must be just below the infraorbital rim. Maybe you can see the tip location is just there. You see that? So it is really touching the rim itself and it's just below the orbicularis retaining ligament. Place a little bit of pressure underneath. And then I'm starting to inject. Let me see, there is no scale here. OK, now we go. So I'm going to inject approximately 0.1 ml in a retrograde linear thread. OK, that's 0.1. Then from here, Needle, please. From there, I will make my second retrograde. And this, I love this indication because you will see why. And again, I go towards the infraorbital rim, a little bit more medial now. Again, give some product, 0 0.05, maybe 0 0.1. And then I kind of push the product towards the, towards the or infraorbital rim, towards the orbicularis retaining ligament. And as you see, we are keeping the projection of the lateral cheek, but we've now reduced the concavity that was more visible earlier on. And Let's have a look. Look straight in the camera, please. So you can appreciate, even though she has some mascara over here. Have you been crying, sweetheart? <laughs> Are you OK? OK. So you can appreciate that we've reduced the pelvic romalar roof. Maybe not perfectly. We can press the product a little bit better. But one very nice additional advantage is the cantal tilt improvement. Do you see that this canthus is a little bit higher than this one? And it's because we place a little bit of filler here at the infralateral orbital rim. So we're pushing up the canthus, the lateral canthus. That rejuvenates. This is one of those invisible rejuvenation strategies that you could use also like the superior orbital sulcus, which he doesn't have, but it's also one of those amazing places that you can inject, you can get a very nice, subtle rejuvenation. 
Okay, I just, I'm irritated by this one little depression, just go down. And so I go from here. So if you, well maybe I should not show you that way because that would be in the direction of the globus. All right, so I go from here. You see that with minimum amounts of product, you can create great, great results. And beautiful young woman like this, it's just a matter of strategic placement of these products. Okay, now can we go to my new favorite product, Radius Plus, please? Because um, I would like to share with you how I treat the mandibular line. That's what you want, isn't it? Okay, good. Can I have a marker, please? Okay. So, I'll just turn your head a little bit to the right. Okay. Re-disinfecting. It doesn't matter. So I usually disinfect everything here, the ear, the neck, everything. And, you know, you see here the mandibular angle. You can palpate it easily. So it's right there. So from here, I will inject a line to the preauricular area. And from the mandibular angle, I will go to the post gel sulcus and follow the mandibular line. And there, I want to create more of a dramatic shadow. You see here that the cheek and the neck, well, with this light, of course, it's a bit more difficult to assess, but the, the cheek and the neck are kind of continuous. So what we want is we want to have a clear border that this is the cheek and this is the neck. There should be light, there should be shadow. That's the idea. So I'll start at the mandibular angle. And one, two, three, a little bit of anesthesia. And for the definition of the mandible, I will use radius plus because it can create very nice sharpness. Okay. So, this is non-diluted radius plus. I don't dilute radius plus myself. So, if you want to inject in this area, what would be, what, what are the danger zones in this area? Of course, you know, there's the facial artery. <coughs> it's running, you know, deep over the bone over here. There is the parotid gland that's over the masseter muscle. Other than that, it's a very safe place. So the, the danger zones are subsmas. So if you inject superficially, then you're actually relatively very safe. So I kind of lift up the cheek and stretch the skin. And then I move the cannula subcutaneously. And I just give her a nice, thick, retrograde linear thread of about, let's say, 0 0.2 is usually enough. 0 0.2, 0 0.3, something like that. Then I move along the mandibular border in a subcutaneous tissue. And I stop just in front of the post-gel sulcus, or at the post-gel sulcus. So this is the gel, pre-gel sulcus, post-gel sulcus. So over here, this is my cannula. So again, I give a retrograde of about 0 0.2. Now I will change back to diluted radius. And I will give a nice fanning in between. And I'll tell you why. Because I don't need to give her a broader mandible. I don't want to create volume here laterally. That would only masculinize her face. But I do want to create some collagen because I want to have a lifting effect. And so you see that together, 
non-diluted and diluted radius work very well. Can I ask you something? Yes, please ask. Um, whenever we get patients, we don't have the privilege to use so many pipes or so many uh, syringes, uh, like with diluted, non-diluted. Here, you have this privilege, but we have to minimize. So what would you do? So this is a very good point. You know, we are now acting like this is some kind of ideal world where patients have unlimited credit cards, right? Okay, I do have a few patients with unlimited credit cards. Of course, they're my favorite patients. <laughs> but the reality is a lot of people are on a budget, you know? So that means, you know, you have to talk about money. So now it comes down to how to sell these treatments, you know, and I have to admit to you, it took me quite a while, but now it's, I'm, I'm working in this field for 13 years now, and I'm doing mostly full face treatments, mostly. And of course there's treatments in between that are, you know, maintenance treatments, but all of my patients I want to move towards combination treatments, and I'll tell you why. I send out satisfaction surveys to my patients, and the highest satisfaction I got from patients that were treated with radius, belotero, and zeomine, toxin, right? So the combination of the three was giving the happiest patients. And so, if you would come to my clinic and you would say, I have only budget for one syringe, then you would pay a relatively high price for that syringe. I've made packages that contain toxin, radius, and hyaluronic acid, and these packages are relatively cheaper. They contain discount compared to buying individual syringes. So I will tell my patient, listen, if your budget is 600 euros, add 350 more, then it's 950. Then, instead of only one syringe of Radies, I can give you one syringe of Radies, one syringe of Bellatero, and 25 units of toxin. And then it's a difference, you know, and they are more likely to choose for that treatment, also because the way of consultation. And I'll explain to them, you know, if we only do one little bit, I'm not sure if that's gonna make you very happy. And so, Investing into thinking about some kind of uh, package, combination package for your patients is, is really well worth it. Because, you know, eventually if you give your patient a great result, your patient is going to be a marketing machine for you. Because mouth to mouth is the best marketing that you can have. Okay, let's have a look. Um, You see that we created now shadow, light reflection, shadow. And here is also a little bit, but it's not as sharp. Do you see the difference? Okay, there's, there's, a, there's another thing I would like to show you, and that's mental augmentation. And you see here that she has kind of a depression, right? There's bone resorption here, so we, she needs some submuscular bilateral volume and she needs some radius to finish the mandibular contour and to augment the chin. All right. Sweetheart, please lean back. All right. Uh, is this needle, needle's good? All right. So. That doesn't she need some toxin in the chin? She does need some toxin in the chin, the very good point. But unfortunately, I think Xeomine is in November or something, when is it? Maybe they allow me to come back. Can I have a marker? Thank you. All right. So you see here there's a gel, right? There's the marionette line. There's a pre-gel sulcus. So this is kind of the gel, pre-gel sulcus area. Then there's a chin. And you know that with female ideal proportions, you know, we keep the width of the chin within the width of the ala. 
So the chin should not be much wider than this. Let's see, I'm not completely in the midline, I think. So, okay, so maybe like this. From the side, it's difficult to see. Let me have a look. Yeah, so the width of the ala, the intercantal distance, basically, is the, the limit, of the width of the chin in a female. So with a male, it is more the width of the mouth that would give the male aesthetic chin. But with a female, it should be more elegant, sharper. She's lacking a little bit of projection, and you can see a little bit of the orange peel skin because of a hyperactivity of the mentalis muscle. Very good point. I don't know who said that. Was it you? Saying she needs toxin in her mentalis muscle. Definitely, she could use that. But also what we could do is give her a little bit of volume below that muscle. If we do that, then that volume is going to stretch the muscle and relax it. It's a concept called myomodulation. All right. I'll go in from the pregial sulcus. Give a little blab of uh, lido and a pre-hole needle. Thank you. And so you're, I, I like your choice. You're picking up radius for me. OK, so we'll start with the radius. Doesn't radius plus. As radius plus is perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So from here, I go into the, through the skin, so I'm into the subcutaneous tissue, and I'm advancing the cannula to the midline of the, of the chin. So I'm here. And again, retrograde linear thread. I go up. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Retrograde. And I go up. So it's three small retrogrades of radius plus that are going to be in the subcutaneous tissue. All right. You OK? Then I move to bilateral volume. Or actually, you know what? To do better avoid. What is diluted? This is radius plus. I also want to use radius plus for projection of the chin. Okay. I will use bilateral volume for correction of bone resorption here, but um, I want to use radius plus for projection of the chin. You can also use bilateral volume. So for projection, I lift the muscle, and I want to go underneath it. One, two, three, click. Now I'm underneath the muscle. And I'm pressing now against the midline, underneath that muscle. And there's a potential space. So you can just inject a nice bolus over here. Never exact all the bolus on the same place. And I'm looking from the side to assess the Steiner's line. Let me have that marker. Thank you. Can you hold this? I'm just going to turn your face a little bit this way. And I'm going to assess the Steiner's line. It is, I think it's done. It's there. So, Yeah, that's good. So the only thing I need to do is give a little bit of bilateral volume um, with a cannula, please, yes. In this area where she shows bone resorption. So this is also one of these very interesting places for myomodulation. Remember the depressor anguli oris over here, triangular muscle. During the aging process, there is bone resorption that results in a reduction of the distance from the insertion of the muscle to the origin of the muscle. So the, the, the mandible moves up, and therefore the muscle becomes looser. So the muscle has to contract, pulling down the oral commissure. Oh, I already have a pre thank you. And so if you would inject a little bit of bilateral volume below that muscle, 
Of course, you could also do this with radius, but I'm choosing bilateral volume because I'm going to be here very close to the oral mucosa. And if you would inject radius in the submucosa, then you see, if she opens her mouth, a yellowish nodule. It's not very aesthetic. So therefore, I would use um, hyaluronic acid over here. So I'm injecting a small bolus of 0.05. I advance another small bolus of 0.05. 0.05. Let's see. And could I have that radius back, please? Is that this one? Okay. Just before we finish, I would like to correct some of our mental crease. You can do that from the same entry point. So I go from here. Mental crease. Here we go. So I think the love is starting to fade again. The radius and the so this is. Are very close together. Yes. So over here, I'm injecting radius in the subcutaneous layer. So over here. So it's a different anatomical layer. It's subcutaneous. The bilateral. I injected here submuscular and here in the midline I injected submuscular but where I injected the hyaluronic acid there is no radius all right let's have a look did that change the position of the oral commissure on the left side not much but it did it did lift it a little bit do you see that this is a subtle effect, but you see the subtle improvements that you see with injecting these products. Could I have a wet swab so we can assess better? How are you feeling? You okay? You're getting used to it now, huh? All right. Can you smile? Okay. One extra thing that I want to show you is injecting laterally here. Look at the smile lines over here. We didn't do anything here. Look at the smile lines on this side. Smile harder. You see they're much more severe here and much less over here because we are pulling the cheek back, pulling the skin back. All right. So we've done, we've done half of the face. Next year, when I come back, I'll show you the <laughs> other half of the face. <laughs> All right, so um, how much time do we have left? Are we done? How much time? Do we have any time? I'm going to show you the basic principles of neck rejuvenation, right? Would you like me to bring you some questions? Yes, please. What? Yeah, just give me a nice drink. I don't know, like, something like... like, 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 like no I, I like gin and tonics. Excuse me. Can you do my brain rejuvenation? <laughs> <laughs> brain rejuvenation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, guys. I have one syringe of radius. 0 0.5 milliliters of lidocaine. And the rest is saline. So I have 6 mLs in total. So it's a hyper dilution. There's one, one syringe of radius in the mix. So... I'm going to attach it to a normal radius syringe and I'll take a 23 gauge cannula. So, need to disinfect, did you disinfect? Could you take off your necklace please? Okay. I'm very spontaneous. So we have a very spontaneous volunteer. So I will show you a very effective way of improving the skin quality of the neck and reducing the horizontal neckline. So just disinfection and you see here some horizontal necklines over here. Can you go down with your chin a little bit? There's one here. A bit more down. Okay, that's okay. All right, so basically two main horizontal necklines and, of course, a little bit of laxity of the skin. From the 
the mandibular angle. Remember where we ended with the lower face mandibular angle? There's your first entry point. You can use that same entry point for the neck. Now, I also want to have one midline line. So one line in the midline, like this. Parallel to that line, I draw one line from the mandibular angle and one in the middle. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six entry points. So, are you a doctor? Yeah. So do you need lidocaine? I'm a dentist. It's not a real doctor. In <laughs> it's a new needle. Do you also have a blue step needle? One, two, three. A little bit of lidocaine over here. A little bit of lidocaine over here. Lidocaine over here. Lidocaine over here. Lidocaine over here. And over here. Can I interrupt you? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that GNT. So I give it a free hold. Thank you. And trying to find the pre hole. Okay. So I'm in. And I stretch the skin. And I find a very superficial path. You see, it's very thin skin here. Now, this is 25% radius and 75% diluted lidocaine, so it injects very easily. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. So, with two retrogrades, I actually did already almost a little bit too much. So, from the first entry point, I want to inject approximately 0 0.5. And I'll tell you why. Needle. We can do it with a needle also? You can do it with a needle, yes, absolutely. Yes. One and one. But with a needle, you have much more bruising, of course. But, you know, um, actually there's one professor in dermatology, maybe you know her, Jana Yutskovskaya from Russia. She looked at the difference in collagen stimulation between cannula and needle. And she saw no difference. So even though you might think that with the needle you are more intradermal than with the cannula, actually she didn't find a significant difference in collagen production between the two techniques. So sometimes it's difficult to enter through the dermis here. Can I have the stab needle again? Anyway, you, you get the idea, right? So, go in. I said go in. Why isn't this cannula listening to me? Never swap. So the dysma is quite strongly attached to the skin in some areas. The cannula is too soft. Okay, here we go. Yeah, the cannula is a little bit uh, flexible. Flexible. Okay. But you get the idea, right? So this yeah. becomes a little bit repetitive after a while. Sorry, are you okay? Okay, good. Sorry? The cannula? No, this is the same amount of collagen synthesis between the cannula and the needle. Alright, so you get the idea, right? You get it. This is becoming boring now, right? It's also, it's not as artistic as the face. The face, you know, you look, you see the changes, it's amazing, but this is boring. So, oh, sorry, you're not boring. You're not boring at all. Not at all. So, I will, I will, I will skip the, the rest. Right? No, I won't skip the rest. I won't skip the rest. I will go with the needle and I make another entry point. Thank you. One. Uh, where was it? Maybe here. Here. Two. 
and three. Okay. Can you raise your chin? Yes, very good. So very superficial again. And you see small amounts of radius injected very superficially. And this will tighten the skin. So from here as well. Come on, yes, we are in, following the horizontal necklines. You can even pass the midline a little bit. And as you can see, it, until now there's no bruising, but it's not a guarantee that it's not gonna bruise if you use cannulas. I have seriously bruised my patients when using cannulas in the neck. So, a patient like this, one syringe of radius is probably enough for both sides. So I've injected now in total three cc's, which is half a syringe of radius, right? So that is the left side of the neck. Are you okay? Yeah. Good. And now I'll switch to Bellator Soft with a 30 gauge needle. And I will show you how to finalize this treatment. <laughs> now, the radius is not very visible, but the Bellatero soft you're gonna see. No, a uh, needle place. Because I'm going to use a blanching technique, and so she's gonna have a few visible papules of Bellatero Soft for a few days. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Okay. So I'm looking for the horizontal necklines, right? You can see them over here. You see that? So I go in with the needle and I just give a little blab. Stretching the skin, giving small blabs until I see kind of a blanching effect in the skin. I'm following the horizontal necklines. This is soft. This is Bellator soft. I've tried this with balance and I have to admit that the skin is here so thin that with balance sometimes you have uh, more visible uh, depositions for a longer period of time. And if it's anywhere beyond one week, people don't like to see that, you know, it's hard for them to accept. So there's the pearl necklace, all these little pearls on her neck. And you see, you only need very little bits of Bellator soft, tiny amounts, intradermal drops. And as you can see, this definitely is visible. Do you see this? These are visible depositions of Bellatero Soft. If you would do this with any other product, you would be in trouble. You would probably have to hyaluronidase this away. But because this is Bellatero Soft, I'm getting away with it. Because it will even out, it will spread through the tissue and it will be invisible in about three days. So that is the little magic of neck rejuvenation. Thank you very much.